So um, this video is about Simon Bolivar and Latin American Revolution. And the do now that you guys had would have been to name two geographic features in South America that may prevent the continent from unifying. Right. And so um, Mr. Humphreys had uh, talked with the class and they settled on the Andes Mountains and the Amazon jungle and river. Right. Because it, it's going to make it hard when you have these big geographic features to unify an entire region. So let's start here and look, break it down. The American and French revolutions spread the idea that people were entitled to a government that protected their interests. So remember, the American Revolution comes first, the French are inspired by it, and remember they cut off the you know King Louis the Sixteenth and uh, Marie Antoinette's heads. And um, they, they are, you know, driven by this idea that people are entitled to government that protects them, right? So that's the core of these revolutions. And I want you to be mindful of that. That's why I tried to, you know, do this in a way where it kind of popped out. American French Revolution spread ideas. People were entitled to government that protected them, okay? When Napoleon conquered Spain, Latin Americans were able to govern themselves. So here would be an image of Napoleon. And just to understand kind of what happened, Napoleon overthrew Spain and Portugal. And then he decided, hey, you know what? Since I'm in control, let's put my brother Joseph Bonaparte on the Spanish throne, right? So by putting him on the Spanish throne, do you think the colonists are going to want to, you know, give loyalty to Joseph uh, and Napoleon Bonaparte? No, no. So they get all upset and they, you know, revolutions start. They, 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 they revolted. Um, and then this just shows kind of the breakdown on this map. If you look here and here's the equator. This is North America and South America, and you see uh, British, uh, I can't re read that one, Dutch, French, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish. I should be able to figure out that. But those are the different colors of the colonies, okay? So let's move on. We, we, we just know that, you know, the colonists did not like being ruled by others from out of their own country. So here are some reasons for nationalist movements. Latin Americans resented the restrictions, right, that were forced upon them. It forbade them. It, it prevented them from trading with countries other than Spain, right? Because if I'm, you know, now in charge of Spain, uh, Joseph Bonaparte, I'm like, no, you can only, you can only trade with me. Um, they resented, the Latin Americans again resented restrictions that prevented them from manufacturing their own goods, right? So not only can they only trade with Spain, but they can only, you know, they can't even manufacture their own goods. So they're going to send their resources to Spain and Spain's going to manufacture them. Then they'll have to probably buy them back from there. And the American and French revolutions encourage freedom and self-rule. So let's see how this kind of rolls out. After Napoleon's defeat, many Latin American colonies refused to return to Spanish rule and de demanded independence, right? So things were, there's a lot going on in the world at that time. Napoleon's defeated and they're like, well, wait a minute. You know, there, there were these other revolutions, the American and French revolution. Let's see what we can do. So in rides Toussaint Louverture, and here's a picture of him. He led an uprising of African slaves in 1791, forcing the French out of Haiti. So this guy was, you know, a hero to the people in Haiti, which is uh, shares an island with the Dominican Republic. Look, it's only about, you know, I don't know, 100 miles from Cuba, right? And here's Puerto Rico. So this just gives you a sense. And Toussaint Louverture and the African slaves got the French out of Haiti. And you can see if you look if you want to pause this and look deeper at this, you can kind of see how things kind of happen. And this was the slave uprising right here that kind of started everything. So 
Haiti was then the first Latin American colony to achieve independence. And again, this is just showing you where Haiti is. This is the flag that they uh, settled on, right? So in uh, 1791 to 1804, that's when the revolution was. So it was shortly after, or right at that time, I guess, uh, that the um, independence was claimed. I guess 1804. So let's see. So now let's talk about Simon Boulevard. This should not say continued, but here's another guy. Revolts freed these countries from Spain, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Panama, Peru, Venezuela. So we see all of these countries here. So Simon Boulevard defeated the Spanish forces, right? So Spain was this huge force trying to get more and more uh, land. So between 1819 and 1825, Simon Bolivar and his forces liberated Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. And you'll notice that Bolivar sounds like Bolivia, right? And here's a video for you to watch. So I hope you do that. Jose de San Martin worked to liberate Argentina and Chile, right? So we have Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador over here, Peru, and Bolivia. And now we have Argentina and Chile. Here is Argentina and here is Chile, right? So another uprising, right? And they're liberated from Spanish rule, 1816 to 1818. So if you're Spain, you're a little bit upset now, right? So if you're, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte's brother, uh, Joseph, you're, you're not happy and neither is Napoleon, right? But I think by that time he might have been exiled, but I, I'm not 100% sure at this moment. So. so now let's look at another hero. And he didn't have quite the same level of success, but Miguel Hildalgo, he was a priest. And he began a re rebellion against Spanish rule in Mexico in 1810. The uprising failed, unfortunately. But Mexico later achieved its independence about 11 years later, so in 1821. So this gentleman was very much uh, one of the underlying forces for Mexico ultimately gaining its independence. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward a little bit so we can see where we've come from. Let's see, 17... Uh, let's see, I don't know, but 1791-ish, okay, so the, the 1790s, and then we go through 1825, 1818, 1821, and now 1823. So about 30 some odd years later, the President of the United States, President Monroe, issued the Monroe Doctrine in 1823, and it stated the United States would oppose any attempt by Europeans to establish new colonies in the Americas. Okay, so that meant that the United States, the Monroe Doctrine is saying, nope, sorry, if you come over this, this line, basically, then, you know, you're going to have a lot to deal with and we're going to, we're, we're not going to tolerate it. So don't even think about it, right? Any attempt by Europeans to establish new colonies in the Americas, forget about it. So the Monroe Doctrine made it clear to the world that the United States had special interests in the Western Hemisphere, right? So the Western Hemisphere is over here. It's the Americas, North and South America, right? And here's the Eastern Hemisphere. You have the Europe and Russia and things like China and Japan, things like that over there, right? And the United States, Monroe is saying, look, hands off, don't even think about it, okay? And that's an important time in the U.S. history. So that happened again about 1823. So from 1790 to 1823, we're seeing a lot that happens. So now what happens after the independence? Well, after independence, dictatorships, unstable governments and poverty or extreme, you know, extremely uh, ex being very, very poor, right? I'm just going to put this in here. Very poor, right? That's what poverty is. You don't have uh, ample shelter. You don't have enough clothing. You don't have enough food. So these things affected many Latin American nations. 
the land and the wealth remained in the hands of the small elite, or I guess they were called caudillos, or military rulers, leaders ruled in some places. So, you know, the independence is great for some people, but then things kind of fall apart a little bit, right? And it creates this vacuum where other people come in, like military rulers, uh, leaders, and start to try and rule. So questions for reflection. What are some of the causes of the Latin American independence movements? Right? They just didn't like, you know, being told what to do. That's a big cause. Who was Toussaint Louverture and what did he accomplish? Just go back here and look, look at, you know, somewhere up here. I think we talk about Toussaint Louverture. Right? There he is. Okay. What were the accomplishments of Simon Bolivar and Jose de Saint Mar Saint Martin? So Bolivar hmm, sounds like Bolivia. Well, remember, you can just go back up here and you can look at what he did. Here's Jose San Martin, and here's Simon Bolivar. Right. So help yourself. Go back into the content. Compare and contrast Miguel Hidalgo and Toussaint Louverture. Right. And Miguel Miguel Hidalgo back up here again, was a priest. He was not successful with the independence. Um, it happened later, but he tried, right? Versus Toussaint Louverture. And what happened to the newly independent nations? Was it all great? Did the governments come in and protect the people, or did they fall into poverty and things of that nature? So I'm hoping this was helpful. Hope to talk with you guys soon.